Hi, everybody. How are y'all? <laughs> okay, so I see some familiar faces who've been coming the last couple weeks, some new faces. That's wonderful. I uh, just want to let you know uh, we've done two sessions so far. It is chronological, so if you've missed anything, don't fret. The library has been recording and filming. I also have a supplemental website that you are welcome to visit um, and check out anything you might have missed. Today, we're going into the Western Swing Resurgence. So this beautiful music got going in the 20s, 30s, 40s, kind of even into the 50s. Um, we heard some last week, Bob Wills, he'd brought in a horn section, he had been doing some different experimental things. But really it didn't, it had kind of come out of its heyday. And um, we like to think of certain bands and artists that were reviving the music kind of in the late 60s, 70s, 80s, and that's what we're talking about today. Um, so we will, we'll just go ahead and get going. Um, right here, this is the little website that I started. So I've been uploading my PowerPoint presentations and any additional information. If there are songs that we heard or bands that we listened to, any other additional things we talked about, um, if you'd like to write that down or if you've already written it down, there's a place to check it out. And also, of course, the library is archiving everything. So here we go. All right, History of Western Swing, The Resurgence. So some of the artists that we're going to be talking about today, a bunch of these are really familiar names to you, I'm sure. Um, Asleep at the Wheel, of course, probably one of the most popular full-on Western swing bands today. The original Texas Playboys were still playing. If you were here last week, uh, we listened to some excerpts from the 1986 concert that took place at Will Rogers Coliseum, which is an incredible concert. And that's also the information's in the materials if you'd like to check that out. Tommy Alsip, Merle Haggard, Willie Nelson, Glenn Campbell, George Strait, Clay Walker, Brad Paisley, the Dixie Chicks. There are so many others too. There's Riders in the Sky, there are the Time Jumpers. There are so many beautiful artists, Emily Gimbel, Katie Shore, Hot Club of Cowtown, so many to cover. Um, um, well, that, that gets a little bit later, but again, you just kind of start to see that these bands were bringing back the sound late 60s, 70s, 80s, even into the early 90s, and it kind of found a little home again. So here we go. Let's get started with Willie Nelson. All right. <laughs> Look at Willie. So when we think of Willie, we think of Willie with the braids and the bandana and kind of the, you know, reefer madness. Like, that's what we think about Willie. Okay, but Willie Nelson, he, I don't know if y'all have heard, has anyone heard the Liberty recordings? Have you heard the Liberty Records recordings? Very early recording sessions with Tommy Alsip as the producer. And Willie Nelson was in these clean cut 1960s suits. He was kind of a very different artist when he started out. Um, and that being said, even Willie Nelson to this day will play Western Swing and Bob Wills song. So that's not to say that he doesn't still do it, but especially early on in his career in the 60s, um, he was recording beautiful Western Swing songs. So this album, I'm just kind of pinpointing this one, Country Favorites, recorded in 1966. He was covering some of just his very favorite songs. And like I was saying, like the Liberty Records album, very strong Western swing influence. He was using Western swing musicians recording Bob Wills songs. He was also making regular appearance on Ernest Hub's TV show, and the Texas Troubadours actually became his backing band. So there's a lot of crossover there with early honky tonk and country artists with very strong Western swing influence. So here's just a number of the musicians that were on that album. Um, Wade Ray, incredible fiddle player. Leon Rhodes was the house guitar player at the Grand Ole Opry for a long time. Uh, had really, really fast picking fingers. I actually got to play with him before he died, so that was special. He was a, a cat. <laughs> Buddy Charlton on the pedal steel. Hargis Pig Robbins. So does everybody know this recording um, behind closed doors? Oh, yeah. Right, okay, Charlie Rich. So that piano player. Um, that's Pig Robbins, and the, so the story goes in the session, 
but they were kind of going, okay, we got this beautiful song. I think Tommy Alsip was producing it. And they said, pig, do something for us. And he went, dun, 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 da -da 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 -da. super iconic. Anyway, <laughs> just to give you a, a, little, a little idea of some of the people that he was working with. So this album um, included, just for instance, the Columbus Stockade Blues. And I'll go ahead and play this video. This was recorded with his wife, Shirley Coffey, or Shirley Colley, I'm sorry, on vocals. And you can, what is happening with my mouse? Oh, here it is. Um, here, very strong influence here. Way down in Columbus, Georgia, I want to be back in Tennessee. Way down in Columbus, Stocky, friends have turned their backs on me. Go and leave me if you wish to. Never let me cross your mind. In your heart, you love another. Leave me a little dark, I don't mind. Way down in Columbus, Georgia, I want to be back in Tennessee. Way down in Columbus, Stocky. Friends have turned their backs on me Go and leave me if you wish to Never let me cross your mind In your heart you love another Leave me little darling, I don't mind commercial success for him, but it's known as a great artistic success for Willie Nelson. So anyhow, let me get back to my PowerPoint here. Okay. Hello. There you are. Okay. So again, very jazzy, very up-tempo. Um, Columbus Stockade Blues, My Window Faces the South, that's a Bob Wills hit. San Antonio Rose, Home in San Antonio, all Bob Wills numbers. Uh, like I was saying, it wasn't mainstream, but he was just stretching out. He was doing music that he loved and bringing in some of his early influences. So again, just kind of moving on a little bit. Um, we're, I'm jumping a little ahead because we haven't gotten to a sleep at the wheel, but I really loved this video because it included a lot of mainstream artists doing some Western swing music. And I wanted to show you guys this clip. All right, thank you all very much. What do you say we do? Hide a rib. Don't be slow. 
Thank you guys for being patient with me while I wiggle through. Okay. Okay. So, moving right along, we get to Merle Haggard. So Merle was also another one of those mainstream country artists who had been heavily influenced by early Western swing music. Bob Wills, Milton Brown. He was recording Western swing music. Um, he did an album, which uh, you could see here, a, best, a tribute to the best damn fiddle player in the world, a salute to Bob Wills, in 1970. So he included all of these folks. Uh, we've talked about some of these folks in the past couple of weeks, but they were all from the original Texas Playboys lineup. Merle Haggard also plays fiddle. Did anybody know that? They were like, yeah, he plays the fiddle and um, well, played the fiddle. Ah, oh, rest his soul. Um, I got to see him one time. I played Willie Nelson's Picnic and stood 50 feet from him and from the wings and watched him play, and it was one of the greatest uh, events of my life. But. Anyway, a wonderful, wonderful artist. And also, Earl Paul Ball produced that album. And you can still go down to Austin, Texas and see Earl Ball play. He's still alive, still playing. And he's, he's wild. He's such a fun man. He occasionally shoots me a Facebook message, which is so funny. It's like, what's up, Jenny Mac? I'm like, he's got to be in his 80s by now. But he's a character, anyhow. Um, but this album really inspired some of these other folks, like Asleep at the Wheel, uh, Commander Cody, and who we'll get into in a bit. And he really was sticking to these original arrangements. So he was doing a bit more of a true blue kind of tribute. He wasn't really trying to do anything different with it. It was a 100% tribute. Uh, beautiful, beautiful album. Um, and until his death, continued to collaborate with Western Swing artists. He was even on an album that we, we talked about it last week. It was the 100th year celebration of Bob Wills that Tommy Alsop had produced. And he had artists, everybody from Glenn Campbell to Cr Cross Canadian Ragweed to Dirk Bentley. But he had Merle Haggard on it. And Merle Haggard sang this song. So we'll watch a little clip here. Went to bed last night I wouldn't sleep in Wondering what's happening to me You broke my heart And left me lonely Now I Nothing left but misery Wondering if you have found another love Leaves no consolation in my heart Some You'll be sorry 
wonderful. So that <laughs> might, might have been unbeknownst to a lot of people that he was doing Western swing music. Um, what a beautiful singer. Anyhow, ah, thank you, Mo Haggard. Okay, moving right along to Commander Cody and his Lost Planet Airman. Now, if we want to talk about some hippie traditions here, okay, I'll just say, because y'all might be more familiar with the Sleep at the Wheel, Commander Cody was a huge influence on a Sleep at the Wheel, which you might be able to tell. So again, there are so many artists to cover, but I do want to do some honorable mentions to a few of these folks. They were formed in 67 in Ann Arbor, Michigan. They combined all of these genres. Now, if you, if you just want to take a look at that, they were really early proponents of that boogie-woogie piano sound that Asleep at the Wheel loved and grabbed up. And um, Floyd Domino, who was an original member of the Wheel, learned from Al Strickland. So if y'all were here um, before, you know, Al Strickland was the original piano player for Bob Wilson and Texas Playboys, and he was a direct 100% teacher and influence on Floyd Domino, who would later go on to join, form Asleep at the Wheel with Ray Benson. And this band um, was a huge influence. They had even, they were the, the band that told Asleep at the Wheel, who was from, oh my goodness, where are they out of? Yeah, West Virginia, thank you. They told them, go to the Bay Area. So that, that was why Sleep at the Whale ended up there was this band. Um, but let's get a little bit of a video. I know I, I like to show you all videos and whatnot so that you can get a sense for this and play some recordings. This band right here is hippy dippy in a good way, right? Drinking if you don't stop driving that hot rod. <laughs> Commander Cody. Okay, so anyhow, and actually Sleep at the Wheel has recorded Hot Rod Lincoln, so I'll just get into them in a bit. 
Um, moving right along to Dan Hicks and his hot licks. So I love this group. They were formed in 67. Again, you can see that kind of broad array of influences there. Um, the swing, the blues, cowboy music. Uh, Dan liked to say, we are folk swing. <laughs> they performed everywhere from Carnegie Hall to Austin City Limits. You can, they actually did Farm Aid with the Sleep at the Wheel at one point after um, they had split up. They split up for a time, went on kind of an, a hiatus, and then they did reform in 1991 for, for some shows. But um, Marianne Price, I did want to make a special note, she was a vocalist in that group, and she later went on to join Asleep at the Wheel. So I wanted to pull up, because I like to bring in records. Um, let's see. What was the one I wanted to play off of here? Oh, My Old Timey Baby. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. records by the way but you can probably hear that it's got that really cool almost silver screen cowboy and western swing influence just a lot of beautiful music there they also um, one of their signature songs was I scare myself and it has a really strong gypsy jazz influence so that's one that I recommend checking out this band is just all over the place and I love it okay asleep at the wheel how many of y'all know that band? Does anybody? Yeah, okay. So, Asleep at the Wheel then. Look at this really young Floyd Domino on piano. Super, super young Ray Benson, Chris O'Connell. Um, and then, Asleep at the Wheel now. Yeah, there's Ray. There's our, this gal, Katie Shore. She's from here in Fort Worth. Katie plays the fiddle. She's a real sweetheart, local girl. All right. So they started in 1970 in West Virginia, which I completely blanked. Ray's from Jersey, so I kept thinking Jersey, Jersey, but it's not Jersey. West Virginia. Um, 
Commander Cody told them, y'all go to the Bay Area, right? So they're currently based out of Austin, Texas. Um, again, you can see some of the things that they did in the really early days. Look at those billings, you know, <laughs> Asleep at the Wheel and Alice Cooper. Wow. So um, again, this is all part of this resurgence idea. It was these bands that were bringing back this sound, doing these throwback sounds and making it new, making it different. And Asleep at the Wheel is probably on the forefront and the very, very absolute best at that, at being able to modernize it and kind of give it a twist and make it relevant and cool again. <laughs> so Willie Nelson, they met Willie and he said, y'all go to Austin. So that's why they're based out of Austin. Uh, of course, they've got several Grammys under their belt. So one album that was of significance, Texas Gold. So it's produced by Tommy Alsop and the song, the letter that Johnny Walker read was a huge top 10 mainstream hit. So this was a band doing kind of funky music and they had kind of a top 10 country hit and included on an album that had a bunch of swing and honky tonk and jazz and blues and all sorts of other music. So they were, they were coming onto the front of the scene and being a little bit different. So that was a very significant point for them. Like, <laughs> look at that, Rolling Stone, best country and Western band, cool, right? Western Swing's cool. Um, so then they did this album, the tribute to the music of Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys. Look at this lineup of people, all of these country artists that they were including to do Western Swing songs. Bob Wills, they're inviting, uh, again, the, the, Dix, the Dixie Chicks, you know, Dwight Yoakam. They had a lot of mainstream artists that were coming on board to record this music. Um, they tour pretty often still to this day with George Strait. They're always, I mean, maybe as recently as two years ago or maybe pre-pandemic, but um, they also, several of those members have incredible careers. Uh, Cindy Cashdollar, we saw her in that early video. Jason Roberts, uh, Emily, Marianne, Katie Shore. Emily, Marianne Price played with a, some outfit in England. Does anybody know? I completely forget who this was. I'll remember it at the end, it's terrible. I knew this, but she, she moved to England for a time and played with a rock band. I mean, she was, she was doing all kinds of interesting things. Oh yeah. Oh, really? Oh, wow. I had no idea. That does not surprise me. A couple of incredible women. Um, so then uh, just they just released just to kind of get into some of what they're doing now, um, an EP called Better Times, and we'll play this little video. This was their brand new thing. The clubs are all closed, the streets dark and empty. The air seems a threat, every breath seems to tempt Live life like we used to, for those days we pine But we'll be together in better times Times when we join hands, neighbors and friends Times when the good times together never end Times when we gather, ties that bind, but we'll be together again in better times. Friends on the street, they all look like Jesse James. Mask up and distant, they just don't look the same. <laughs> Concerts and parties and football games Virtual everything just ain't the same Tired of 2020, ready to flee Tired of being lonely, yearning to breathe free Remember the rhythm, remember the ride Together again in better times.
girls on the street, they all look like Jesse James. Masked up and distant, they just don't look the same. Concerts and parties and football games. Virtual everything's just ain't the same. Tired of 2020, ready to flee. Tired of being lonely, yearning to breathe free. Remember the rhythm, remember the rhyme, cause we'll be together again in better times. from Asleep at the Wheel. <laughs> All right. So that's their, that's their newest venture. All right. OK, and you can still catch Asleep at the Wheel. They're still touring out there on the road. All right. Moving right along. I want to do a little honorable mention about Glenn Campbell. Um, <laughs> Born and raised in Delight, Arkansas. That is how you say that. I have been there because I used to, I lived in Nashville and I was going back and forth all the time. I loved Glen Campbell growing up. And I'd see this sign, it said Delight 34 miles, you know, off the highway and just pass it every time, every two weeks. And one day I just went, I'm going. <laughs> so, ventured off and went on, I thought I have to see. And you pull into the town and there's a little sign that says the home of Glen Campbell. And that's, it's basically just a little, convenience store and that's it. But I sort of just walked around on the stones for a while and thought, okay, well, I've, I've been to the, the holy land of Glen Campbell, right? But um, it was great. But anyhow, there are some wonderful performances he did on Austin City Limits. He performed with Johnny Gimble. He liked to revive old Western swing and old folk melodies. So some of the songs that he recorded are listed here. I Want to Be Wanted. Uh, which is a Bob Wills song. Also, I'll Be Lucky Someday, which is Bob Wills. And he did a very kind of slowed down Melodot crooner version of it with the string section, and it's really lush and beautiful. But he was for sure influenced really young. Grew up singing with all of his siblings, and um, they were very, very poor in delight. So they had music, and they had love, and they had church, and that was about it, you know? So he, he was listening to what his parents listened to and what was on the radio. And um, anyhow, I love him so much. So you might want to check out, too, Glenn Campbell's early Western swing stuff. OK, so we got we to gotta break into the Dixie Chicks, too. So this is the, the sort of early version of the Dixie Chicks. Um, you have Marty and Emily, and Robin Macy was on bass, and Laura, Laura Lynch was the singer. Um, so that was the early, early Dixie Chicks. This is how we see the Dixie Chicks now. But um, Laura Lynch, she's a Dallas-Fort Worth. Um, she, she's here in Dallas-Fort Worth. They were formed in Dallas. And Laura Lynch is still around and a, a wonderful, wonderful person. She's not part of the band any longer. But that was the sort of early installment. So they, again, were, their influences were country, western, western swing, bluegrass, old fiddle music. They recorded a song called Thank Heavens for Day 11. She's everything I'd ever want to be. Yada lo, yada la, yada lo, day 11's made a cowgirl like me. So, woo, yada lo, dee. <laughs> Very different sound early on than they have now. However, they added Natalie Maines, and they did do the collaboration with the Sleep at the Wheel I mentioned earlier. So I want to play a little bit of this for y'all, because this is the the current installment of the Dixie Chicks singing a Bob Wills number. <laughs> loading, loading. There we go. Okay. <laughs>
just something a little bit different for them and um, again part of just keeping that sound coming back in collaboration with the sleep at the wheel okay I want to take just a second and talk about a couple of local things that are cool before we get our incredibly special guest up here but um, there is a wonderful festival which um, our, our guest today is also a part of but the birth and history of Western Swing Festival takes place right here it's happening again in November so this is going to be 3316 Roberts Cutoff Road. That's National Hall. So if you all want to check that out, uh, that might be worth a look. And here is a little trailer that's part of the film that was made in association with this festival. Nothing made Bob matter than if you'd call his music hillbilly music. Because Western Swing is jazz. It gave rise to rockabilly and to, uh, to rock and roll. It gets inside your soul, your heart. It brings tears to many people's eyes when they hear it. Most exciting time in my life to find Western swing music. They might not know exactly what they're hearing, but they know they like it. Its intention was to make people feel like dancing. If the people in the clubs weren't dancing, that means they didn't like you. Western swing defies categorization, but we know what it isn't. It most emphatically is not country music, but it has always impacted country music. It isn't quite jazz either, but it swings and improvises just as well as the famous big bands of the 1930s and 40s. So what is Western swing? Western swing is like America itself, because you hear America in Western swing. It was like a giant melting pot, a gumbo of cultures, ethnicities, styles, and rhythms working together to be stronger, indomitable, and mostly infectious. From its very beginning, Western Swing was like a ravenous animal, devouring everything in its path. It absorbed anything and everything with a joyful exuberance that thrilled the musicians as much as the audience. If you close your eyes and listen closely, you can hear the old reels and jigs of American frontier fiddles, the improvisation of New Orleans jazz in Dixieland, the soulful blues of the South, the oom pa pa beat of a bohemian polka band, the sweet violins of Bavarian waltzes, the fat sounds of big band swing, and the accordion, horns, and guitars of Mexican mariachi. There's an unbridled freedom when music has no rules, and Western Swing broke all of them. Western Swing is free. It's composed from the heart and on the spot by musicians on their instruments. The birth of this joyous music developed at a time when America was in the depths of the Great Depression. And at the time, innovators like Bob Wills and Milton Brown didn't realize they were inventing a whole new genre of American music. They were just trying to provide their audience with an escape, if only for hours, from the harsh realities of daily life. They would use any instrument, sound, beat, rhythm, create or steal any hot lick from anyone or from any genre to create this exciting new sound. They were trying to lift the people's spirits, but mostly they were trying to make people dance. And dance they did. This is the story of the birth and history of Western Swing. Be sure and mark November 10th through the 12th on your calendar uh, in National Hall because y'all don't want to miss that. Okay, so I did want to take a moment to mention this wonderful organization, the Cowtown Opry. So I, when I was 12 years old, was walking the stockyards with my grandmother one day and came across the sounds of beautiful music being played. And it turned out that it was the Cowtown Opry. 
So here, I, I did include their mission statement. The Cowtown Opry is committed to preserving, promoting, and performing Western heritage and Western swing music and cowboy culture. It's a 501c3 nonprofit. They have a children's club called the Buckaroo Club, which is what I, I signed up for. So I would come out a Sunday a month, and they would have guest musicians and guest speakers and, um, and would mentor the children 17 and under. And that was where I cut my teeth learning about Western Swing and cowboy music. Here's a little plug for their fundraising gala, actually, which is coming up on April 9th. You can see that some of these beautiful artists, Jean Prescott, Brooke wallace Seaton, Kristen Harris, will be there. Um, if you need any further information, I'd be happy to help. And our lovely guest, I'm sure, could also fill you in on some information. With that being said, I'd like to welcome my friend and mentor, <laughs> Devin Dawson, to the stage. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Devin, Devin was one of the lovely people that I saw playing on stage that day when I signed up for the Cat Town Opry, and she taught me a lot about music, pointed me in the direction of great recordings and great artists, and has mentored countless children and young artists through your life and career. So, so yeah, thank so you for being here. I, I never forgot you, though. My <laughs> first time she came to the Cat Town Opry, she wanted, she was singing, and she has a beautiful, controlled and trained voice from age 12, I think you're 12. And she was singing Patsy Cline and Johnny High. And that's where I first, I think that's where I really connected with you. But uh, she came to Buckaroos and I said, well, welcome, you know, she had this accordion and she laid it over in the corner. And I said, after she'd done that for like, it was once a month when they'd come. So after you'd done that about twice, I go like, why are you laying your instrument down in the corner? Oh, I, I'm taking classical accordion lessons. And I thought, you do know that accordion is involved in Western music, right? <laughs> no! <laughs> so then she finally came and brought the accordion. I got it out of the bag like the next month or whatever it was. And then I, and she was going to do Yellow Rose of Texas, I think, or something like that. And, and, and she says, where's the music? <laughs> Why do I we don't use any? <laughs> you play my ear. She she went home and bugged every record, trained her ear. I I just found myself motivated. Next <laughs> thing you know, you're like she's this great take takeoffs, doing takeoffs. Y'all know what that is and improvisation. It's what he said, what Red Seagull said there when he said it's free and it's about improvisation. Um, Within the confines of historic Western swing, which is if you're doing it today, you want to honor the forebears and you want to do it in the style of Bob Wills. So the big groups like Billy Martin, Luther Will, I mean, they all they all do a lot of the, even the instrumental parts. They'll do the same. But uh, I have a small duo. I've got a duo with Jesse Robertson, and we love to do Western swing. Uh, I'll bring him up here in a minute. Is this on? Am I actually on? Is the light on? Yes. I have a shout out to the secret. Is it on? You don't have it? Let me see. So, it didn't sound like it was reverberating, but Is I on still now? speak out. There, okay. There you are. Yeah, it's on. Okay, but you didn't miss anything. <laughs> well, I discovered Western Swing as a teenager in West Texas. Uh, I actually was hearing it earlier than that. My father was a musician, a professional, and so by the time I was nine, he gave me my first guitar, and by the time I was 12 and 13, I was on stage with him as his rhythm guitarist, and he played lead, and my sister ended up being a drummer. So that was our family combo. And, and of course, he, we, he, we did American Songbook, and we did Top 40 Country, which is what we now call traditional country. Rock had not entered country music back then, so it was like Loretta Lynn and... You know, Tanya, she, I'm the same age as Tanya Tucker, pretty much, so, uh, but she sang better than me <laughs> at age 13. <laughs> anyway, uh, so finally, we were down in Corpus Christi on the coast, and, and uh, we were playing a lot of places, but then we moved to um, uh, Duncan, Oklahoma, and we loved to travel, so we went to Arizona, too. We, I lived on the Colorado River, and then we came to Brownfield, Texas, which is south of Lubbock. That's the panhandle. That's cotton country. And I don't, Daddy liked to live 40 miles from a big city. He didn't like living in a big city. So we'd, we'd travel 40 miles to get to gigs. <laughs> but anyway, the house we bought it had two houses on it, the land we bought, and it had a shed. And in the shed, there was a pile of 78s this tall. 
and a bunch of them were Bob Will's sides, and they were covered with West, West Texas dust that had sifted between them in this little shed. So I started getting them out, cleaning them off, and playing them, and I fell in love with Sugar Moon. I immediately learned Sugar Moon. <laughs> so I guess I should just do a little bit of Sugar Moon. Can I play with you? Oh, yes! Right. Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> we don't get to play together all that much anymore, so I was tickled when Ginny called me. I'll be in G. All right. What? Two, three. When it's sugar cane time, come along with that tune. When the bells are being chiming, leave the old sugar man. And so here I am, a teenager in high school in the panhandle with all the kids around me know all the heavy hair farmer bands, you know. And, and, and that, I have no clue, but I'm living in love with Bing Crosby and, and Sons of the Pioneers and, and Bob Wills. <laughs> yes, I was very strange. My father was born in 1918. Dad was born in 1918. So I skipped, and I was a late in life child, so I skipped the whole generation, and that just makes me be real throwback in my musical tastes. And, and I've never regretted that for a moment. I mean, one night I did stay up all night long and watched every YouTube video that the Beatles ever, that they had up on YouTube, and <laughs> finally went to bed depressed at 7 a.m. <laughs> So, okay. I just want to educate myself. So, is it, okay, you said that you were growing up listening to all the stuff that your your father had in the house. You know, mm -hmm. Crosby and stuff. And what he played. And went, yeah. Yeah. And, and so, and you said, or oh, you were very strange. So, if I was 12 years old and I met you, and you were also influencing and imparting all this music on me, so I was very strange. Yeah, yeah, we were because strange. Because of you. Right. <laughs> we're all a little strange. <laughs> so, you, you skipped the generation, too? So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to quickly talk about the women in, in Western Swing that yodeled. Now, Bob Wills always had a few gals that, in the band that yodeled, and most times they didn't play music, they didn't play an instrument, but they came on and did a yodel song or two or duet, and Dean and Evelyn McKinney did that. And so uh, I knew that, and that wasn't real important to me, but my dad could yodel, and he would do a few Sons of Pioneer songs where he would yodel on stage and part of the, but I never really thought I could do it. And then when I was 40 years old, you can teach an old dog new tricks. I just knew that I knew that I knew that I knew that I, 
wanted to learn the yodel. I felt it was something from the Lord, you know, just to add to my stage persona. And so I worked real hard at it in this uh, year of 1998. And uh, by the year of 1999, I had one good song I could put on stage, which was I Want to Be a Cowboy Sweetheart. And, uh, <laughs> and that summer, I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew that I needed to be in Gene Autry, Oklahoma on uh, October, uh, September 28th, the, the last Saturday. It was the Gene Autry Festival up there near Ardmore. Well, I figured it was for two reasons. I was going to be able to start a jam session and have fun with my fellow musicians. I don't think you were there because I didn't know you then. Uh, well, soon after that, I knew you. But anyway, and the other reason was that my favorite Western band in the world was going to be there. So I bought five expensive tickets so my whole band could attend their of the Riders in the Sky, the concert. Mm. And so I'm on the back porch about three in the afternoon, having rushed up there from the State Fair of Texas where I performed with the Texas Trail Hands and all the Texas Trail Hands came up. We came up in like two cars. And anyway, so we're, we started this jam session. It's like a group of musicians in the center and this huge donut of people all around and, and it's like a hundred people. And, and I'm in the middle, the only song I know how to yodel when the Riders in the Sky drive up in their RV and park right beside the jam session. And they get out right when I'm yodeling. And it turned out that was my audition to be Jesse of Toy Story 2 on the right. Pixar album that came out. They had been searching Western Music Planet for months and could not find the right voice. It had to be just this thing, the, 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 the right voice. And, and they, it's like God had me at the right place at the right time. So prepared. <laughs> That's a whole testimony right there. But anyway, so they get off the, and they hear me, and I don't find this out till later because it took them three weeks to find me. But anyway, they, I don't know if you're aware of how the fine musical expertise they have because we think of them as a cowboy band, but they're actually amazing swing musicians, every single one of them, and all their shows are just top-notch. They're based in Nashville, so if you ever get a chance to see them, you should hurry and do that. They've been together about 40 years now. <laughs> At 50 for a sleep at the wheel. Wow. Yeah. So, I'll do a little bit of the Jesse song, uh, which is on the album. They won a Grammy for it. And I told them, well, having a girl on your album didn't hurt a bit. I was born in Oklahoma in the rolling Osage Hills. And I rode my pinto pony at full gallop for my thrills. And a song of joy and gladness bubbled up inside my heart. First, fourth, in merry music, that's how yodeling got its start. I'm Jessie, the yodeling cowgirl. I'm dainty as a fairy, princess of the prairie. I'm Jessie, the yodeling cowgirl. I ride along, I yodel my song, dawn till the still dawn. Come on up here, Jesse. My dear old partner's name is Jesse Robertson. We're known as <laughs> We're known as Miss Devin and the Outlaw. I'm the Outlaw. Yeah. And my husband's sitting right down there. He's Chuck Wagon Chuck, and he comes to protect me from the outlaw. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear him or not. But since his name is Jesse. <laughs> When we start doing together, he goes like, I want to sing this song too. Yes, and I said, well, no, 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 it was written for me. <laughs> so I moved to California. You did. I became a TV star. Ooh. Broadcast waves and beans and rays, cats yodeling near and far. Uh -huh. My yodeling swept the country. Sure did. An epidemic that all caught us. That's now sick, everybody huh? knows me as the epic goddess, goddess, but I'm just Jesse. The yodeling cowgirl. Girl. I'm just saying, I'm dainty as a fairy, princess of the prairie. I'm Jessie, the yodeling cowgirl. I ride along, I yodel my song, dawn to the still dawn. I'm Jessie, the yodeling cowgirl. I yodel, 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 I yodel,
Broadcast waves and beans and rains cast yodel in near and far. My yodel in swept the country. An epidemic sort of thing. Now everybody knows me as the epic Lottis King. But I'm He's just Tennessee, Middle England cowboy. I'm prickly like a pear tree, but I'm the blurry. Jesse, a young ring cowboy. I ride along a yellow sun, dun 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 dun. Jesse, a young ring cowboy. A little high, a little high, a little too. A little high, a little high, a little too. A little high, a little high, a little too. A little high, a little high, a little too. more like a polka with that. But yeah. There's a little something yeah. everything in Western school. Yeah. Thank you for having us, Jenny. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, it has been such a pleasure. Thank you, Miss Devin and the Outlaw, for being here. Would you all like to do a rendition of Happy Trails? Oh, yeah. Ooh, absolutely. Yeah. In the yeah. It's like, it's like old time. All the, I know. <laughs> the Buckaroos, the kids, they always are taught to end their shows. I mean, at least we did. We taught them to end with Happy Trails. So. We still in our countdown, adults, the adults there's in actually, countdown. Are there's really actually good. a famous singer that does that too because she was influenced by the countdown. Oh, I think uh, Casey Musgrave. Casey Musgrave. She, she does it in her yes. shows. With, yeah. Some trails are happy ones. Others are blue. It's the way you ride your trail that counts. Here's, Here's a happy one for you. Devin Dawson, thank you all for coming. Yes, I appreciate it, and I so appreciate Devin and the Outlaw for being my special guest today. Come back next week is going to be the final chapter in this chronological series. It will be Western Swing in the present day and where it's moving forward, and there will also be a full band concert. So, I hope that you'll join us. Again, feel free to check out the website, um, the library website, also the educator website that I have if you want to catch up on any materials or revisit anything. Thank you for being here. Feel free to ask questions. I'm here. <laughs> Thank you.